Tell me, do you hear it? The sound of the wind blowing through the trees. The sound of saw blades cutting through a ponderosa pine log. The sound of music and quietly shuffling feet from somewhere far away. These are the sounds of Twin Peaks, one of my favorite TV shows and something you might have heard of before since you clicked on this video. You see, Twin Peaks is everywhere. It's all around us, in our past, in our present, and in our future. And I would love to tell you about Twin Peaks and try to sell you on why I think it's worth checking out. Twin Peaks is a TV show that aired for two seasons in 1990 and 1991. While it was only on the air for a brief window of time, when Twin Peaks was big, it was huge, a bona fide pop culture phenomenon that swept across the United States and around the world. Even after all these years, and after so much more Twin Peaks material has come out, when people bring up Twin Peaks, they're usually referring to the two-season show that kicked off the early 90s. The show's throwback aesthetic, moody atmosphere, and driving mystery keeps bringing fans back while also drawing new viewers into those unknown woods. Genre-wise, Twin Peaks is kinda hard to pin down. The original series is definitely a murder mystery. The high school prom queen, Laura Palmer, has been murdered, found dead, wrapped in plastic, and in this town of 5,120.1, everyone is a suspect. While the show has a large cast and many subplots, I think most would agree that the main protagonist is FBI agent Dale Cooper, the man charged with solving the case and bringing the killer to justice. At once a hero and at once an eccentric, Dale Cooper is a very lovable character. But beyond being a murder mystery, Twin Peaks is also a soap opera. There's melodrama, romance, and betrayal, all wrapped up in this heightened serial drama. Sometimes the show is corny or campy, but sometimes it's deadly serious, even verging into horror. See, Twin Peaks was originally conceived by two people. Hill Street Blues writer Mark Frost, and the famously cryptic director David Lynch. Many people worked on Twin Peaks over the years. Many writers, directors, and producers. Actors and other people on the set would come up with great ideas, sometimes on the fly, and these would get incorporated and shape the course of the show and create iconic moments. Twin Peaks has always been a group effort. However, David Lynch's impact should not be understated. He was the director for the show's pilot, as well as some of the most important episodes in the series. So while I think it's a misnomer to say that Twin Peaks is made by David Lynch, period, without acknowledging everyone else, it does mean that David Lynch's signature brand of surrealism is at the core of Twin Peaks. When the series pilot aired in 1990, there had never been anything like this on TV. Arguably, there still have not been many things like Twin Peaks ever since. Lost and Atlanta and Lars von Trier's The Kingdom get some comparisons among a few other weird shows, but Twin Peaks still feels different from pretty much anything else. The original series had the driving mystery of who killed Laura Palmer, alongside a lot of comedy and drama from the ensemble cast of interwoven soap opera characters, and then that tendency to lean into the bizarre and inexplicable it made it all the more entrancing. People couldn't get enough until it all came tumbling down. A lot's been said over the years about why Twin Peaks got canceled. And if you're interested in the behind the scenes production info and context behind the eventual ending of that original series, two good books for that are The Essential Wrapped in Plastic by John Thorne and Reflections by Brad Dukes. Those go a long way to help explain what might have went wrong. But no matter why it happened, Twin Peaks was canceled after only two seasons. The light that burns twice as bright burns half as long, and you have burned so very, very brightly, Roy. A year after Twin Peaks went off the air, co-creator David Lynch directed a new film called Fire Walk With Me. This movie would serve primarily as a prequel to the show and focus on the final days of Laura Palmer's life. 
Compared to the TV series, Fire Walk With Me turned out to be much darker and generally much more serious. While scenes with side characters and the extended cast were shot, a lot of it ended up getting cut out of the film, not to be seen for decades later until the missing pieces got released officially in 2014. What fans were left with in Fire Walk With Me was almost all dire and uncomfortable stuff. When it debuted, Fire Walk With Me was booed at the Cannes Film Festival, and it was slashed apart by critics. It was a box office failure in the United States and extremely divisive among fans of the show, many of whom would rather have had a movie that continued from season two's ending and maybe answered some of their questions. And perhaps more importantly, many fans wanted a Twin Peaks movie that more closely resembled the lighter tone of the show. But in the 30-odd years since Fire Walk With Me fizzled and flopped, the movie has been re-evaluated. And now it's commonly recognized as one of David Lynch's best films. Also, the majority of Twin Peaks fans have warmed up to the movie, with many praising it as the best part of the franchise, possibly the most important key to it all. Still, when Fire Walk With Me initially failed, it looked like it might be the end of Twin Peaks for good. The show had been canceled, the movie was a flop, and while fans wanted more, it seemed less and less likely as the years rolled by. Until, in 2017, the gum we like came back in style, and Twin Peaks was miraculously brought back for a limited series run courtesy of Showtime. This 18-part continuation of Twin Peaks is called by a few names. Some call it Twin Peaks Season 3. Personally, I am on the side that calls it The Return. But no matter what you call it, 2017 was the year that Twin Peaks came back. And instead of pandering to nostalgia, this was a very bold and even subversive kind of reboot. The Return was directed entirely by David Lynch. And like Fire Walk With Me, it can get very dark and very violent. It's also harder to understand and more elusive. I don't think fans will ever reach a consensus about many of the biggest mysteries in The Return. It is easily one of the most challenging shows of the past decade, and among its many supporters, it is seen as some of the best television ever made. Period. Twin Peaks also has several books. The first was The Secret Diary of Laura Palmer, which is all about Laura's experiences before her death, and was written by David Lynch's daughter, Jennifer Lynch. The second was the autobiography of FBI Special Agent Dale Cooper, My Life, My Tapes, which is about what it sounds like it'd be about, and that was written by Mark Frost's brother, Scott Frost. The Secret Diary really resonated with certain readers, especially as a way to talk about sensitive topics like trauma, sexuality, and navigating one's emotions as an adolescent girl. My Life, My Tapes hasn't had quite that legacy, but for Cooper fans, it provides a really interesting insight into the history and mind of our favorite agent. In addition to the books on Laura and Cooper, there was also a book released called Twin Peaks, An Access Guide to the Town, which was made by people who made real travel guides for real places. But this is full of weird history about the fictional town from the TV show. The tone is irreverent and at points very silly, but it also brings you into the lore and the world of the town like nothing else. Years and years later, right before The Return aired in 2017, series co-creator Mark Frost wrote a new book called The Secret History of Twin Peaks. He then released a follow-up after The Return finished airing called The Final Dossier. These two books, The Secret History and The Final Dossier, also go into the history of the town. But unlike the Access Guide, they're much more extensive and are presented like a dossier full of archival notes and documents. But wait, there's more! There was also a set of official trading cards released, released by a company that made baseball cards. And don't worry, these cards have story and lore implications. And there was an audio cassette of Agent Dale Cooper's recorded messages, some of which were new material, and an official fan newspaper, and a board game, and as you can see, Twin Peaks is a TV show, but it is also a whole world. Above maybe everything else, Twin Peaks is a really gripping mystery. As you get to know Laura Palmer's life, 
and the people around her. The hook of trying to find out who killed Laura Palmer is so compelling. Twin Peaks has some of the best character writing I've ever encountered. There's strong motivations, twisting agendas, tragedy, and tons of memorable moments shared between friends, shared between lovers, and shared between enemies. Twin Peaks is also one of the funniest shows. I'm not gonna ruin the jokes by explaining them all here, but what I think works so well in general is how this show balances all that serious stuff with the silly stuff. There's a lot of contrast going on, a lot of juxtaposition. Sometimes I think the comedy is so much better because it's a welcome reprieve from how heavy things can get in other moments. And then sometimes between the music and the performances and the writing, you're not sure if you're supposed to laugh or cry at a particular moment. And you might be in a room watching other people and everyone has a different reaction. And you might find that to be fun in its own unique kind of way. Between the show seasons, the movie, and some of the books, Twin Peaks also explores some really serious themes. There's a lot of psychology, philosophy, and history to process, alongside more personal stories of pain and survival. I truly believe that the story of Laura Palmer matters. And then there's all the weird stuff. The supernatural elements, which incorporate Native American spirits and demon possession and realms outside of time and space. The ominous atmosphere of the woods at night the mystery of owls, and the crackling of static electricity or an all-consuming fire. Twin Peaks can be visually gorgeous and striking, from the shots of Snoqualmie Falls in Washington to the unique framing and shot composition from talented directors like David Lynch. And the music! Angela Badalamenti composed the perfect track for each type of mood and scene that the show throws at us. It's jazzy, upbeat and then dark, dangerous then tender, and there's always music in the air. Twin Peaks is also a perfect gateway into the filmography of David Lynch, who I would wager is one of the most interesting filmmakers to ever live. I got into Twin Peaks, and then Twin Peaks got me into David Lynch's films, and then David Lynch's films expanded my mind to appreciate other films and other visual media, and it's honestly done a lot for my appreciation of art. And once you see Twin Peaks, you might start to notice it pop up everywhere, because other shows love to reference Twin Peaks. It has such an iconic and striking aesthetic. It's one of the biggest examples of a cult TV show, and it's arguably one of the first examples of what we call prestige television. Twin Peaks, simply put, is a big part of television history and its influence extends past television, past even film, to the realm of video games. Whether it's games where the influence is blatant, or cases where the developers repurposed some of the show's aspects for a whole new direction. And lastly, if you're still not convinced, I gotta tell you that Twin Peaks has an amazing fan community. Across Twitter and Reddit and Facebook and other social media, Twin Peaks communities are thriving. There's great fan sites like 25 Years Later and Welcome to Twin Peaks, alongside fan magazines like Wrapped in Plastic and The Blue Rose Magazine. Books like Laura's Ghost and Ominous Woosh and so many more that I feel kind of bad I'm not listing all of them. People are making fan fiction and fan films. There's so many good Twin Peaks podcasts too. Twin Peaks Unwrapped and Talking Backwards are classics. The Blue Rose Task Force and In Our House Now podcast dive so deep, and some get into super specific, interesting topics and weird comparisons, like with Creamed Corn in the Universe and Twin Peaks Evangelion. It's Happy Hour in France, The Gifted and the Damned. There's so many I could highlight. And of course, I do have to plug a bit for my own podcast. It's called the Wonderful and Strange Twin Peaks Logcast. And we're an episode-by-episode, spoiler-free podcast. I was joined by a friend of mine who had never seen the show before, and we go through everything, including David Lynch's movies and some of the more obscure stuff surrounding Twin Peaks, like those trading cards. And if that sounds like your jam, then we'd love for you to be our peanut butter. So today, give yourself a present. Pour out a cup of black coffee. Grab yourself a slice of cherry pie or 
maybe a jelly-filled donut, and watch the pilot episode of Twin Peaks. And come back, let me know how you liked it. See you at the curtain call. <laughs>